I'm back! Sorry I've been gone the past month. I've been... busy. to get to the center of a Tootsie Pop. What? How many licks does it take? No, 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 I, I heard you. I just thought you'd want something more valuable, like the login info to my YouTube channel or something. <laughs> you have a YouTube channel? It's got like 250 subscribers. It's, like, it's worth it. Hurtful? Wait. Wait, aren't you gonna let me go? Can I leave? Hello? Dude, I don't even know your name. I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna call you Victor. V Victor? Hello? Screw you, Victor. and salutations and welcome to the Toka Show, where this is my puppy, Titus. As some of you may know, my cat Snickers is a little camera shy, which is a nice way of saying she's selfish! So I'm replacing her with my puppy. Also, dogs equal views, right? So punch in on that face. Resident Evil Revelations 1 and 2 were recently just released for the Nintendo Switch, so I thought now would be a great time to review them, seeing as I just played them. Funny how that works out. Now up to this point, the only Resident Evil games I've ever played have been the first one and seven. And I adored both of them, so I have high hopes for these games. I will link to my video of the original right here because it's one of the videos that I'm actually most proud of, so check it out. I think you'll like what you see. Now, I've heard a lot of things about the Resident Evil... Sorry, one second. What's up, Aruni? You're on the Toka Show. Live. Live. Yeah. Here, let me put you in speaker. Darson, what do you have to say to the fans? Hello, fans. Watching you, you to see Toka get dropped in a blender. No. Now I've heard good things about the Revelations games, but are they actually good, or do people just remember them fondly because of the terribleness that was Resident Evil 5 and 6? Well, time to find out. We'll start, of course, with the first game, Resident Evil Revelations. Now, I am reviewing the Switch versions of these games, so everything I say about them doesn't necessarily pertain to the previous releases on their respective consoles. But I hear other than the added motion controls, they haven't really changed at all. With that in mind, let's begin. Resident Man, I will never get tired of that. So the game follows Jill Valentine and Parker something something on a mission to save their partners Chris Redfield and Jessica something something. They get intel that their partners are aboard a luxury cruise liner named The Queen Zenobia. Yes, Parker, I was just about to say that. STOP INTERRUPTING ME! While on the ship, Jill and Parker realize that some members of Veltro, a bioterrorist organization responsible for infecting a city named Terragrigia, are on the ship, as well as a bunch of these guys. Lots of these guys. Now, I don't want to start a comment war or anything, but I'm pretty sure these guys are ripoffs from the Amnesia Monsters. Not hatin'. 
just Staten. Now already I have a ton of problems with the plot. I don't really know if the plot was actually hard to follow in this game, or I'm just stupid, but the game introduces a ton of new people, organizations, and these guys. But why? Where's the T-Virus? Where are the stars? Where's Wesker and Umbrella? Where's my Jill Sandwich? Now at the very end of the game, it's revealed that this game is a prequel to the other ones, which... Yeah, I get it, but it doesn't really work. Does Veltro become Umbrella? I'm guessing these guys become the zombies from the first game, but why? Why not make a game about the origins of Umbrella and stars if you're gonna make a prequel? It just doesn't make sense to me. But let's give the game the benefit of the doubt. Maybe it'll get better. So first off, the game controls a little weird. Not terrible, just sort of... Bad. Your character moves like a tank. The camera is fixed behind you, so to turn around you have to do so slowly. Or you can do a quick 180 turn, and it looks hilarious. And walking sideways is really slow too. It just feels weird because anytime you aren't walking directly straight ahead, you slow down by half the speed you were just going. And there is no run button. In a game with lots of monsters you need to kill and evade, you can't run. Mostly everything else feels fine though. The shooting feels good. But my favorite part has to be these new motion controls. They make the game so much more fun to play. First off, you can use the gyro sensor to aim your weapon, which is pretty awesome. But the coolest thing is that you can load your weapon by pumping the Joy-Cons like a shotgun. Like so. It's pretty cool. You can also use your knife by swiping the Joy-Con, and that's pretty cool too. I also noticed some weird things with the audio. Anytime I wasn't directly facing whoever was talking, they sounded very muffled, and I couldn't hear them at all. Why do they do this? That's not how mouth words work! That's not how mouth words work! Oh, I just had surround sound on. Oops. Anyway, Revelations takes an episodic approach to the gameplay, where the game is split into episodes, and it makes the game feel very choppy and takes away of some of the exploration aspect of Resident Evil, kinda like Luigi's Mansion New Moon did. On top of that, at the beginning of each episode you get a 30 second recap catching you up on what happened in the last episode. Like, why? Does the game really think I have a memory of a two day old puppy? No offense puppy. And it doesn't help that the story is a mess. They keep trying to get you to care about what's going on, but I just didn't. Everything was so half-heartedly thrown together, it's just sad. And the near expressionless character models did not do the game any favors. Now I've been pretty negative about this game so far, so let me just go through some of the good things. The game does sort of feel reminiscent of the original Resident Evil, but instead of a mansion, it's a cruise ship. I do like the design of the ship, even if the layout isn't nearly as memorable as the Spencer Mansion. Wow, that was only one sort of positive thing. Am I a negative person? Nah, I watched Disney Channel growing up, I'm good. Aside from the design, Resident Evil Revelations feels nothing like a Resident Evil game. 80% of it is spent mowing down baddies, some of which look like Killer Croc from Batman. And a lot of these guys are bullet sponges. Not only does this make the game feel less like a Resident Evil game, and more like Call of Duty the slightly spoopy edition, it takes away any horror aspects the game could have had. You get pretty powerful weapons like shotguns and machine guns pretty early on in the game. And there is always plenty of ammo, so there's no reason to be scared. In addition to shooting and picking things up, you can also scan things. This is helpful to find hidden items in rooms, which is nice, but mostly it's used to scan enemies. It's not the coolest feature, but it's interesting. But out of all of the problems this game has, the thing I hate about it the most is this guy, Raymond. Why? I don't know. I just really hate how he looks. He looks just, he, he just looks really stupid. I just, I want to punch him in his stupid face. That's, that's literally it. I, like his character is very flat, but it's not bad. I just, I just really, really do not like how he looks. He, he just, he has a very punchable face. I, I don't like it. I do not like it. So after some exploring on the boat, you find out that Chris and Jessica are also looking for Parker and Jill, I guess, and they went to a different ship or something. And then Jill and Parker find out that Veltro is going to use cherry Kool-Aid mix to turn the ocean red and full of zombies, 
I guess. But then, but then Walter from Breaking Bad is the bad guy, and he doesn't like Jill and Parker's boss. So that's, that's a thing. And then, surprise, Jessica is the double agent. And then, Parker dies. And then, the real Walter turns into uh, a, a cool thing. But it doesn't matter, because he also gets dead. Yeah, the story is a bit of a mess, and obviously I did not care about it whatsoever. Every time there was a traitor revealed or one of the characters died, it felt like there was never a reason for it other than just a sad attempt to make it all feel like it meant something. Now, there is one other part of the game, and that's raid mode. It's essentially a mode where you run around a map shooting all the monsters until you win. It's actually kind of fun and honestly the best part of the game. I'm hoping they expand upon this in the sequel. Now, I know I kind of made it sound like Resident Evil Revelation sucks, and it kind of does, but I still had fun along the way. I just don't know if I could recommend it to anyone. It's more of a mindless romp killing monsters on a boat than it is an actual game. But I still have high hopes for this second game. Let's... Dive in, let's dive in. Holy crap, the second one is way better! Right from the get-go, the game looks gorgeous. Such a huge step up from the first game. And the presentation is astounding. I've never seen such a huge 180 turn from mediocrity to awesomeness. Now this is Resident Evil. A proper survival horror. A good balance of enemies to puzzles. Actual good puzzles, proper horror elements, and lack of ammo to force the player to avoid combat. Heck, the game is even smart. It even quotes Franz Kafka in the loading screens. Freaking Franz Kafka! The game begins with a simple interesting plot, with Claire Redfield and Barry's daughter Moira being kidnapped and trapped on a murder island with saw-like facilities and zombies. Yes, actual zombies this time. No more killer crocs here. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's go over the controls, which have been greatly improved. For starters, no more tank controls. You can move around as freely as the wind. It's awesome. And holy krasapskis, you can run. I've never been so happy to be able to run in the game in my life. You can even climb ladders normally, which sounds dumb, but in the first game, you just press a button and your character would auto climb for you. Now, it's all you, baby. But my favorite new move has got to be the dodge. You could dodge enemies' attacks in the first game, but you couldn't really control where it went, and you could only do it when being attacked. Now you can dodge anytime, anywhere. And I love it because it looks like Claire is ice skating. It's almost like the game developers read my review of the first game and fixed everything. It's almost unrecognizable from the first game, and that's a great thing. Another thing I love about Revelations 2 is the upgrade system. You get skill points and gun parts, and you can use those to upgrade your weapons and abilities. I know many games have this, but in Revelations 2, it's really simple and easy to use, which I appreciate. You could also upgrade your weapons like this in the first game, but you don't get ability points. The biggest addition to the formula is partners. In Claire's missions, you have Moira, who has a flashlight for pointing out items items and blinding enemies, and a crowbar like Gordon Freeman. And in Barry's campaign, you have Natalia, a little girl who can sense where enemies are and fit through small holes. You always have the ability to switch between both characters to solve puzzles and fight. Now at first, I was a little hesitant because controlling two characters never really makes for fun gameplay. But in Resident Evil Revelations 2, it works. The unique abilities Moira and Natality have really makes them critical to your survival and progression in the game. Plus, this makes for some really fun local cooperative gameplay. Although the screen is split in a very awkward way. I really have no idea why they did this. It honestly just seems really lazy. And as I briefly mentioned before, the story is actually really engaging. Claire and Moira are trapped against their will on this island where a messed up lady named the Overseer puts them through onslaughts of monsters and tests for some sick research, while Barry searches for them with Natalia, who is also very important to the plot, but unlike the first game, I'm not going to spoil it, and the masterful cinematography also helps to tell this story. The episodic approach is still here, but it's done a lot better. There's only four episodes, but each one is much longer than in the first game. They added a brief teaser at the end that shows you what's going to happen in the next episode to make you excited for it. And yes, they still have the previously segments as well, but hey, 
I'll take the good with the bad. Really, the only negative things I have to say about the game is that the loading times are really bad, sometimes up to an entire minute before you can start the game. And the Barry and Natalia segments are half the time playing through the same areas you just played through with Claire and Moira. This isn't that big of a deal though because you do get to experience the same areas differently because of your different partners, and you often get to access new areas that you hadn't before. And if you liked raid mode in the first game, you will adore it in this one. Getting points to unlock better weapons and costumes and characters, multiple maps, fun with with friends, it's awesome. I've spent hours playing raid mode. It's a blast. Woo! That was a lot to cover, but I am done. My review for Resident Evil Revelations 1 and 2. <sighs> Man, it feels good to be back. And thank you guys so much for your patience of me not posting a video the past month. I know that's a long time for inactivity, but I've just been swamped with work. I've, I've been wanting to. I've been working on a ton of videos. In fact, a lot of new stuff are coming in the next couple weeks, and I'm hoping you guys will like that. But that's it from me today. So long from me and, and Titus. Is he, is he in camera? Can you see him? This is his face. See him. Thank you guys so much for watching today's video, and as always, please consider subscribing to my channel, The Toka Show, and giving that bell a ding a ling ling so you are notified for whenever my new videos come out, which by the way is every Tuesday now. Also follow my Twitter, and if you guys have any thoughts about the video or any suggestions for videos or something you want me to do, hey, put that in the comments. I respond to every single comment. I'm sure he'll come around. <laughs> <laughs> You pull it out of your pants. <laughs> <laughs>